y'all. In this lecture we're going to talk a little bit about what lays are and what little bit we know about um, Marie de France and her association with lays. So a lay is just a poetic and musical form. Um, it changes its meaning over the over the centuries and becomes different things. But in the 12th century, during which uh, time Marie was writing up through like the 14th century, 15, early 15th century, um, a lay was a particular kind of like rhymed romance um, poem. Most most uh, works were written in poe poetry form and verse form. So our translation doesn't really have the rhyming, and, and that's fine for us. Um, but the Elements of a lay are often, th you know, supernatural. They involve um, chivalry. Um, there are some instances of influence from classical Greek and Roman mythology and Celtic mythology, romance elements that we'll look at in a moment. Um, Marie de France is responsible, as far as we can tell, with writing 12 of these lays. We don't know if they all belong to her. Um, but we suspect at least uh, most of them do. So we don't really even know what she looks like. Her, um, her image appears in some of the manuscripts that include these lays, but um, they're not to be taken as portraits. They're just sort of a stand-in female figure writing, and this represents Marie de France. We really don't know much about her. Um, she was writing in the 12th century. Um, these lays circulated in manuscript form. They weren't actually published in, in like a collection until 1819. We know that in the British courts, um, these lays were known about. People um, read them and talked about them. Um, but all we know about her in, in general is that she came from France to, to England. Um, we don't know if she worked in an abbey or a convent, although that's one of the scholarly guesses because still there, the literacy rate wasn't all that great at this time, although it was improving, and the clergy would have been the ones who were best educated at the time, particularly females. Um, so generally we don't talk about authors and use their first name. We don't, you know, call somebody John or Sue or Mary or whatever. We refer to them by their last name, but we don't have a last name for Marie, so we have to refer to her by her, her first name. Even though it always sounds kind of disrespectful to my ears, we just don't have a, de France is not her last name. She's just from France, of France. That's what the D means. So Old French was the language of most popularity in Europe at the time in terms of um, creating texts. So some of the works that we'd see in Old French were um, Chanson de Geste, which were epic poems about battles. The Song of Roland is um, one I teach in my humanities course, and it's a, a battle um, in which Charlemagne, one of the early rulers of England, and I mean of, 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 of Europe, um, and, and his uh, most loyal servant, Roland, appears. So lots of those kind of battle poems. Arthurian romances, um, romances that were about Greek and Roman stories, um, drama, you know, either based on biblical text or based on other secular texts, love songs um, sung by troubadours who would travel around and entertain, um, particularly in the courts, they'd entertain with their, their poetry. We have works about the lives of various saints in the church, and we'd have just plain old what we call didactic or educational works, kind of like self-help, improvement sorts of things. So when the Normans invaded England, they brought their language, and that, that language at that time, and, and you can see this um, in, in the uh, textbook, it mentions a section on Anglo-Norman literature, and that's what it's referring to, Anglo being what we consider England, right, and Norman being French. Um, she was very much influenced by the oral traditions and also by the Arthurian romances and love lyrics that were popular at the time. So her writings have a smattering of influences from these as well. Um, her lays best fit in a genre called courtly literature, that is, literature set in the world of the court of nobles with knights and ladies and that sort of thing. 
So what the lay borrows from the romance, um, and we'll talk more about the romance in a bit, but a romance is an adventure story. It's not a romance as in, um, you know, a, a, a love story, although love is often involved, but roman is, is the um, romance word, old French, German still calls it, for just an adventure, a novel, that sort of thing, right? So it's just a ro romance, it's just an adventure story. Um, the lay is very short, so it has some of the shorter, um, it, they're like uh, little scenes that might appear in a longer romance. So they're not real developed stories, they're very short. Um, I have information here from the introduction of the, the edition of Lays of Marie de France that I showed you um, earlier um, in office hours or somewhere I showed you a picture of the cover from uh, the two editors. And they say that the, the lay concentrates pretty much just on the crisis of the story. So all the stuff leading up to it is not really, it, it happens very quickly. We get right into the meat of the story very quickly. We'll see this happen in Lanval. Um, so usually the protagonist is lacking something. Something's going wrong. And then he's confronted um, with some sorts of tests, obstacles, which, when they're resolved, lead to either a happy ending, which usually is marriage, happily ever after sort of thing. That's often the ending of a romance. Or something unsatisfactory, something tragic, like, like death. All right. Um, so the love part of the story develops very quickly. Heroes fall in love pretty close to the start of the story, and there's all kind of complications with the relationship. The lovers often are in a bad situation where they're fighting against evil, and that evil could come in the form of a, of a mean spouse or, a, or abusive spouse, um, or a society that's envious of something that one or both of the um, lovers has. Um, you're going to be looking at the Capilanus, Andreas Capilanus's Art of Courtly Love, some excerpts from that, actually a long list of the conventions of courtly love. And you'll be asked to look at what's different about Marie's um, story, Lanval, from some of those uh, prescriptive behaviors in, in the Art of Courtly Love. So you could look at that later. Um, and that's all I have for you on the lay. It's very short. Um, these, are, these are short writings, and we've just selected the one to, to look at.